pallets. When choosing your pieces of wood, try to keep the knots out of the middle of your clock because in time they're going to shrink and fall out and you'll end up with a hole. If you want that, keep it. If not, just bear that in mind. Right. So all our wood has been cut to length. In uh, the clock you've seen, um, ours is a circle shape. So we're going to use this bit of scrap MDF. This came also off the bottom of a pallet. It was used for packing. So we're recycling this. Uh, so we're going to draw our circle on now, get it cut out with a jigsaw. We're going to stick these to it with glue and screws we're going to route that out into a nice circle yeah we'll just crack on and do that now okay what i'm doing with this jigsaw is i'm cutting a line really really close to our finish line that we're going to route out with our router but it just means we have to take less material off with the router There's our, our circle cut out and the reason for the dimensions of this circle, what we, what we had is this little scrap piece of metal banding. Uh, I don't know what it's, we found that from where it's from, but we're using it to go around the edge of our clock. So what, we use some maths, some <laughs> clever maths and the circumference of our circle is going to be 1,500 millimetres. So knowing that we could work out the radius of our circle and I forgot how I did it but it works so in a minute we'll get this turned into a circle and welded together but firstly we're going to route this out now 
into a perfect circle. And just to help you out, all the math that you need to work that out will be in the description below, so you can have a go at doing this yourself. Let's get cracking. <laughs> so, a few little tips of what we've done to achieve our circle. We've got a cheap little round here, and we've taken the, the base off that comes with it. So, and then we're going to make ourselves a circle jig. Very simple to use. Again, we've used an off cut of, I think it's aluminium there. We take this base. And then what we did is we offered up the base onto this scrap. And we drilled through these holes so that then we could uh, take this, screw it back onto our base. I'll, we'll just screw this one on now. So what we need to do now, when you've got this plate on there, is find the centre point of your circle. We've already got that there, so we'll take the size of your circle, which from the centre to the outside, and place it at the edge of your router blade, making sure your router's off, edge of the router blade, and then just make a mark on there, and then just drill a hole through, through there. So another little top tip, when you've drilled that hole, use the same drill bit, to use to hold your jig in place. Plug it in and we'll get going. Right, so we're all plugged in and ready to go. Uh, the most important, or the main important things for this, is make sure you start the machine when it's not touching the wood and go with the rotation of the blade, which is normally marked on your router. There he is, look. It's nice, isn't it? Again, PPE is important, this is going to create loads of dust, you don't want to breathe it in, it's going to get everywhere, you could have a shop vac on there, but yeah, we're not bothered, we're just going to crack on. So here we are, we've got the first of our discs cut out, we're going to be cutting two of these and cutting out the centre piece. That's how we've got space for our movement to fit in and also because of this banding we're using, it's going to give us this height. And if we just had the one piece of MDF and this, it wouldn't quite be the right height. So we're doubling up with that, leaving the space in the middle for the mechanism and then these will sit on top. So we'll route out the middles for them now. Right, so we've got our two discs cut and that's to give us the height that we need so that all together the three layers will meet the size of our banding, give us something to fix our banding to as well and give us space inside to get our mechanism inside. Uh, so the next thing to do will be, we're going to dry fit all these together, choose them how we want them, which way looks the best and then we'll glue and screw these on. I think I'm happy with that, the way it is. Again, try and keep the knots away from inside the clock face. So that's it, ready for glue. I'm just going to glue around on the ring there. Right, so what we're using in this instance is Gorilla Glue. You could use PVA glue for fixing this. Got lots of glue on. If you've seen our lamp project, you'll have seen that we, we did, we made a mistake and we used the wrong glue and we should have used a heat resistant glue on the base for that because we had the blowtorch on it. If you're going to be having a blowtorch effect finish on this, you're going to also need a heat resistant adhesive. But we're just not going to be doing that, so we're just going to use this Gorilla Glue.
Right, so there we are. We've got all our pieces in place, making sure they're all covering that MDF ring underneath. We're going to leave that to dry. It says on here for 24 hours, so we'll leave it to dry. We might put a bit of weight on it or just flip it over. Then we'll come back for that when we're ready. Okay. And off I go. Right, one of the most important things is finding the dead centre of your clock. We're going to use this off cut that we've got from when we cut it out with a jigsaw. Just drill through that. And that's the centre of our clock. There you go. Right, so we've found the centre of our clock. We're going to go run around this so we've got a rough idea where we're going. This is still set at the same size. We'll be using our router jig again just to fly around this pallet wood now so we've got our nice round finished clock. on other videos I don't follow my own advice don't forget to close your toolboxes when you're routing sanding dusting whatever yeah right so there we are we've got all this nice and routed out our circular circular clock ready for our banding which we're going to make a circle out of now if you're not putting a metal banding around it you can go straight out onto putting your mechanism or sanding and getting your mechanism in there so but we're going to go and make our circle so Let's go over to the roller. Right, so that's our ring rolled and welded. We've got a bit of a, a sand around the edge just to give it a bit of patina. We're gonna make sure it fits on here, hammer it down, and then get ready for sanding. Ooh. Right, time for sanding. Let's get cracking. <laughs> that's done, that's perfect for us. So that's it, that's our clock face finished. Now it's up to you at this point what you do with it. You can do anything you like with this. You could just leave it like this, stain it, paint it. The, the, it's list are endless. But what we've decided to do is we've teamed up with our friends at the Visual Group and they've ensured us that they can print this picture on there, this hula girl picture, and we're going to use the pendulum mechanism to make the hula skirt just sway back and forward. It's going to look awesome. Loads of work to get that doing, but we'll just crack on and do that now. In terms of mechanism, you can just have a normal mechanism with the hands going round, or like we've gone for, the one with the pendulum, which is going to make the hula skirt sway backwards and forwards. Just enlarging this hole now. Now we've marked off our pendulum swing so that we can fit our movement through there and work out how far the pendulum will be swinging across. Right, 
all that's all sorted mechanisms in there and swinging away that's going to look great so we have to take quite a little bit out of there so we'll remove this mechanism now and go and take it up for printing What time is it? It's cocktail time. It's cocktail time! And if you've liked the video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you on the next one. Cheers.